Hey, cool. Welcome back. I'm Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day. Every single day, I'm going to ask you two questions to help you as you continue your CISSP studies. Let's go ahead and jump right in it. All right, let's dabble with some encryption today. Here's the situation. You are sending a message that has been encrypted using a symmetric key. That symmetric key is encrypted using a, another key. What is the general term that we use to describe this type of data structure? When you have an encrypted message that's encrypted with a key that is included, also encrypted with the message. There's your answer choices. Go ahead and give those a, a little look. And when you're ready, if you haven't already clicked pause, click unpause or play, I guess that is, and we can break down what the answers are. All right, now, first answer choice up here is a digital signature. That is not the answer you're looking for. A digital signature is when you take a message and you hash it, and then you take that hash that was created of that message and you encrypt that hash using your own private key. When you encrypt it using your own private key, you can then give that message to somebody else or file, whatever it is that you want to do this digital signature for, and uh, they can use your public key to decrypt the hash, okay, which is the digital signature, and then subsequently hash that same file or object itself and compare the hash that they got when they produced it to the hash that they recovered from your digital signature and see if the two values are the same. If they are, they know that the message A has integrity and B that it's from you and C that you can't deny that you did it, assuming your certificate had been issued by a trusted authority. So all of that is well and good, but it is not the answer to this question. All right, the next choice is how about HMAC, hashed message authentication code. HMAC is just hashing and you throw a little secret in on top of that. So don't just take a file and hash it because that just tells you whether or not the file has been modified. If you want to know the file has actually not been modified and it's from who you believe it to be from, somebody with whom you share a secret, then throw a secret that you share in with the mix, like a password or something like that. So take the file, take a password, hash them both, and then send it. Still in plain text, so you're not getting any confidentiality, but um, the person on the other side, assuming they also know the secret, can hash the plain text message along with the secret that both of you are supposed to know and they can validate that they get the same hash, thereby telling them that this file has not been modified since you sent it and that it's actually from you. So all that still awesome, but not the answer to this question. The next choice on the list is message integrity check. Um, I took this specifically from the vein of meaning a message integrity check like you might find in a wireless LAN implementation for security. Uh, no, message integrity check values are specifically geared towards trying to validate the integrity of a message that was sent. Our question is all about an encrypted payload that has an encrypted key along with it. So still no, not the right answer. All right, well, that leaves us with only one choice, which is a digital envelope. A uh, digital envelope is kind of what the question even defines. So when you're going to say, oh, you've got a digital envelope, what is that? Well, it means that you've got some, some message, an email or something like that. It's been encrypted using a symmetric key, and then the symmetric key is encrypted typically using uh, the public key of the recipient of the message, and then they'll use their private key to recover the encrypted symmetric key, which will then allow them to decrypt the message and be able to view it. So uh, that terminology that we would associate with that is we'd say that you have a digital envelope for doing that. So that's what your answer is. Now, <clears throat> next question is, I want you to pick the best answer, the most appropriate answer. Which of the following address types are used or is used by programs on your computer system or on your system? There's your choices right there. Give those some thought. Click pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play and we can talk it through. All right, first answer choice is a physical address. That is not the answer choice that you should have selected. A physical address is an address that's created by the CPU on the system that represents where the data is actually stored in memory. So this is its real location, if you will. Okay. Now, because of the way that modern computing systems work and we have things like virtual memory, uh, we can't go in and always put something in a physical address and then let the programs um, be able to reference it directly. So to that end, we use the idea of uh, a virtual memory and subsequently logical addresses. A logical address is a different address, which is the answer choice that you're looking for here, that's given to the computer, excuse me, given to the software, given to the program to store its data. Now, the logical address is mapped to a physical address. 
However, the mapping of the logical address to the physical address is not a constant because something may get moved out of physical memory down to a swap file or a page file. Um, and then when called upon again by the logical address by the program, this, the memory manager will realize that the data that um, is in the logical address uh, field is not actually in physical memory anymore. And so then a page fault will occur. We'll have to go and retrieve that data from, uh, from virtual memory, bring it back up to a, and put, store it in a new physical address. Now that physical address may very well be a different physical address than it had originally been stored in. The key thing going on here though is that the logical address for the program didn't change. As far as the program is concerned, everything stays constant. To kind of give you a quick visual on this, imagine that you um, pull up at a restaurant and you have your car valet parked. All right. Now, when your car is valet parked, the valet gives you a ticket that references your car. And you know that if you want your car back, you need only present this valet ticket. Where does the valet put your car? You don't know. And guess what? You don't care. Okay. Well, you might care a little, but you don't, you don't know. And from, you just assume you trust the valet, you don't care. So, and the valet might actually move your car. Your car might get originally parked in, in one lot, but then it might actually need to be moved and the valet might move your car to a completely different lot or move it down the street and park it on the side of the, on the street or something like that. All the while, they know where your uh, car is. You simply have a reference in the form of a, a valet ticket that points to where that car is. And so when you come back to the valet stand and you present your ticket, they will reference that, the, the valet is essentially the virtual memory manager here, that is gonna go in and say, oh, this logical address, which is the answer to our question, is actually now currently at this physical address and they can go retrieve that car, bring it back to you, you get in your car and you put her home. So it all works seamlessly to you. You didn't have to be bothered by the complexities of where your car was while you were eating dinner. Okay, you simply had this one thing that referenced it, and as soon as you needed that particular thing, your vehicle, you pr pr provided your, your ticket that had your address on it, of, it was a logical address, and you got your car back. Okay, so uh, virtual, the virtual memory manager basically loves you, uh, and he you know, wants to protect you from having to be, deal with all the intricacies of what's going on, on underneath the, the hood of, of what the system is doing as far as moving things around from you know, virtual memory to physical memory. You just reference everything by using your logical memory address. Now. There's also a relative address that may be used by software. It's, it's, even though it's one of the entry choices here, it's not the one I wanted you to pick. I wanted you to pick the logical address because that's the one that's most commonly associated with it. And a relative address is really when you have a base address that serves as a reference point, and then a, a relative address simply defines really what the offset is from that base reference point. So it'd be like me telling you to stand right here and then go five steps. Okay, well, five steps is relative. Because okay. you have to know five steps from where. It's relative in the way that like decibels are relative or relative in the way that percentages are relative. If I say, hey, 20% more money for you, okay, 20% more of what? 20% okay. more of a dollar is a very different thing than 20% more of $100. Just like 10 decibels of gain on 100 milliwatts is different than 10 decibels of gain on 10 watts. So the same thing that you have here is this sort of relative idea with a relative addressing where you have a base point and then relative to that, the, the, um, an address can be somewhere relative to that point. Uh, again, can be associated with programs, but not the answer that I was looking for right here. And then the last choice on this list was indirect addresses. I just made that junk up. I just wanted a fourth choice. So uh, no, and if indirect choices are actually something real, then okay. All right, two more questions down. We had ourselves a little conversation about what a digital envelope is. Made sure we felt warm and fuzzy about that. Then we also went in and talked a little bit about different types of addresses, well, specifically physical addresses versus relative addresses versus logical addresses. And logical addresses was the stuff I was most interested in getting you to recognize. So I hope you dug those questions and that they will help you when it comes exam time. If you dug them and you liked them, click like for me. That would be cool. And if you want to get these questions every single day, I do them every single weekday, click on subscribe. And I will see you tomorrow.